Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about simulating NTC type thermistors using LDSPIs. I will be looking over the basic temperature dependent models, but I will also be looking at some other important features like self-heating and the transient response simulation. So if you're curious, then keep watching. Let's start things off with what an NTC thermistor is. So first of all, a thermistor is a resistor like component with strong dependence between its value and temperature. Now any conductor or semiconductor has temperature dependence, but the thermistor component usually has this feature strongly enhanced. Now we have two main flavors of thermistors based on how their value varies with temperature. So we got the NTC negative temperature coefficient thermistor whose value will decrease with an increase in temperature. And then we got the PTC or positive temperature coefficient thermistor whose value will increase with an increase in temperature. Now thermistors have two main use cases as protection elements, either as resettable fuses or overcurrent limiters or as inverse limiters, most often both of these being on supply lines. And the second major use case specifically for the NTC is as a temperature measurement element. Now, depending on the accuracy that you need, there are two main ways in which NTCs can be modeled. First approach being the B value approach. So if we have a look in this application from TDK, we find here the formula for the B value approximation. So we will get the value for our thermistor at a specific temperature based on the rated value at a rated temperature, everything multiplied by e to the power of the B value multiplied by one divided by the temperature of interest minus one divided by the temperature of the rated value. Now it's important to mention that this sort of B values will commonly be found with some sort of subscript. So this indicates the temperature interval in which they are valid. And outside of these temperatures, this formula will not give accurate results. And usually in data sheets, for example, this one from Vichy, other than your rated resistance, so at 25 degrees, and your B value, you will also get the tolerance with which the B value is valid within the specified temperature interval. So if we look at this series of thermistors, the B value approximation is accurate within 3% at low values, and it can go down to an accuracy of about 0.5. So you can get more, you can get less, depends on the thermistor. So if we want to apply this in a simulation, we need to use our B value formula and well, copy from the data sheet the B value and our rated resistance. So if we take, for example, this 10 kilo ohm NTC that has a B value of 3,977, we can create a basic model in which we model the NTC as a resistor whose resistance is the rated value, so 10 kilo ohms times e to the power of the B value 3,977 times one divided by the temperature. So in this case, I'm using the simulation temperature plus 273. So we need to go from Celsius to Kelvin minus one over the rated temperature. So 25 degrees Celsius plus 273, 298. And to check out how the NTC behaves, I'm supplying it with a constant current of one and we can work out its resistance based on the voltage dropping on the resistor divided by the one amp current. And to see it over a wider temperature range, I'm performing a DC operating sweep that is sweeping the temperature parameter, so the global temperature of the simulator between 25 and 85 degrees in steps of one. So if we run this thing, check out the voltage divided by one amp, we can see our NTC's resistance vary from a starting point of 10 kilo ohms and it's going down to about 1.068 kilo ohms at 85 degrees. Just to see if this is any good, we can go back to the data sheet, find our 10 kilo ohm NTC. So it's the one that has 10 kilo ohms at 25 degrees. And if we check out the 85 degree value, it's 1.07 kilo ohms. So very, very close to what we're measuring in the simulation. And it is within our 0.75% tolerance that is attributed to this B value. So what do you do if you want on the one side more precision 
and on the other wider simulation range. Keep in mind that the B value was specified only to a certain interval. Yet the NTC will work over a much wider temperature range. Well, in this case, we have the Steinhardt Hart equation. Now, in the same datasheet that we were looking at previously, we also have this Steinhardt and Hart equation pair. So we have on the one side a formula with which we can determine the resistance of an NTC at a specific temperature based on its reference value and, well, a large exponential, but the formula also works the other way around. So if we know the value of an NTC at an unknown temperature and we know the reference value, so at 25 degrees, we can also work out what the temperature at the measured value is. Now, fortunately, this datasheet doesn't just provide us the B values for our NTCs, it also provides for a specific B value the set of parameters that we need in our Steinhardt and Hart equation. So if we look at our 10 kilo ohm NTC that we were previously simulating, that has a B value of 3977, we get this set of values. So for our initial formula, we only need A, B, C, and D parameters. So it will be this lot. Now, although the formula looks complicated, once you plug it into the computer and you add in all of the values, things become pretty simple. So I prepared a simulation in which I kept our initial B value approximation for our NTC, but this time I also added in another circuit with the Steinhardt and Hart equation. So it's quite long, it looks quite complicated, and I don't want to go into too many details, other than pointing out that one of the ways in which you can raise to a certain power a value in LTSpice is using the POW function, so POW, the value, and the power to which you want to raise it. And finally, let's simulate this, and I will be doing the same type of DC operating point sweep, but this time going from minus 40 to 150 degrees. So now if we just zoom in a bit, and again perform the conversion to ohms, we can see that in our 25 to 85 degree interval, both of our graphs seems to give us the same value, but especially at low temperatures, we're getting completely different NTC values. So if we check the minus 40 extreme, our Steinhardt and Hart equation is giving us a value of 335 kilo ohms, whereas the B value formula is giving us 413 kilo ohms. So again, to see which is more accurate, we can go back to the datasheet, check our 10 kilo ohm NTC, and if we go to minus 40, we see that we should be getting 332 kilo ohms. So neither of our formulas is giving us exactly 332, but our Steinhardt and Hart equation is giving us 335. So we're very close. Now, the final thing you could try, although this is not really commonly implemented, is use the table function present in LTSpice and insert the value of the NTC at every single temperature point. So as we can see, commonly datasheets for NTCs give us NTC values in steps of 5 or sometimes even in steps of 1 degree. So you can create a huge table that takes all of these temperature values at all of the temperatures and uses it with the table function to interpolate whatever value you need based on this set of values. It's quite cumbersome, but if you really want to, you can do this. So what you would need to do is set the resistance equal to table and then an X and a huge set of pairs of resistance values and temperatures. So NTCs aren't that complicated to model. You have a formula, some parameters, pretty easy. But there's another thing to consider. The NTC's temperature doesn't just depend on the ambient temperature, it also highly depends on its own power dissipation. So this is something obvious and well intended when using the NTC as an inrush limiter. So to illustrate that, what I have here is a basic circuit in which I have an NTC in series with a 10 ohm resistor and I will be supplying this from the power supply at 10 volts and I will be measuring the current. So if we apply the supply voltage, we can see we get a certain current and the current is slowly increasing. So we don't start off with our maximum current because our NTC value is large at the beginning when it's cold, but as it heats up, the current slowly increases until we reach a steady state. Now, NTCs used as inrush limiters are quite useful. For example, if you're trying to charge a very large capacitor, you want to limit the initial current, 
so this is quite a common use case in power supplies, but it can also be useful in things like vacuum tube filament supplies, where you don't want to have a huge initial current, but rather you want to increase the current steadily so that the tube filaments don't burn out. So it seems that we have reached steady state at around 800 milliamps, and of course it's important to remember that we started off with a current of about 400 milliamps. Now the thermistor doesn't care what you're using it for. So the self-heating will occur with any thermistor, even if you like it or not. And to illustrate that case, what I have here is a basic thermistor measurement setup. So I'm supplying the thermistor through a series resistor, and I'm measuring the voltage drop on the thermistor. So this is connected to the oscilloscope. So on the yellow channel, we're measuring the voltage on the thermistor, and on the blue channel, we're measuring the supply voltage. Now, the supply voltage in this case isn't continuous. So I hooked it up to the signal generator where I'm supplying it with a square wave, which has an amplitude of 10 volts, and it's running at a frequency of 10 millihertz. So the entire period of the square wave is 100 seconds. It's on for 50 seconds, off for another 50 seconds. So this experiment is going to take a while, and that's why the oscilloscope is set to a time base of 8 seconds. So eventually we got our signal, and what we can see in blue is that our supply voltage, so the signal coming from the generator is constant, but in yellow the signal that is being measured by the thermistor is not constant. So I set my E cursor to highlight the value at which we had our initial value on the thermistor, and we can see that the yellow line is slowly going down. So as the thermistor is heating up, the value that it is measuring is getting lower and lower, so we're getting a more and more inaccurate measurement. And after a while when the signal recovers, so when the supply turns on again, we can see that the NTC has cooled down, so the yellow line has recovered to the initial value. So here we can clearly see how the NTC is heating up and cooling down during the measurement process. And well, this is not something that you want to see. So now let's see how this feature can be simulated. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I will be using the B value approximation of the NTC resistance to keep things a bit more simple and easy to understand. But of course you can apply this exact method to the Steinhardt and Hart equation. So rather than just having a basic simulation in which we have our thermistor and well the rest of the circuit, to show this I have a dual system in which we have both an electrical circuit, so our NTC in series with a resistor and supply voltage, and on the right side, a thermal circuit in which we are trying to determine the exact junction resistance of our NTC. So on the left side, the value is given by our B formula. And on the right side, we have a current source whose current is equal to the power dissipation on the actual NTC. So the current going through it times the voltage drop on it. And now this current source is connected through a resistor representing the junction to ambient thermal resistance of the NTC. To the actual temperature in the simulation, so this voltage source's value is the temperature of the simulation, and well based on the junction to ambient thermal resistance and the current coming from the current source was equal to the power dissipated on the NTC, we will get a specific voltage in this node which is equivalent to the temperature of the junction of the NTC. And now this temperature we're using in our B value formula as the temperature at which the NTC's value is calculated. So we're not relying on the ambient temperature alone, but we're using this plus the self-heating temperature of the NTC. Final thing to add here is this capacitor, which represents the thermal capacity of the NTC. So this capacitor will take a while to charge and to discharge, thus representing the time period in which the NTC has to heat up and cool down. So if we simulate this thing, on the one side we can look at the voltage that our NTC circuit is measuring, so the voltage drop on the NTC, we can see that this is falling, but we can also add the temperature of the junction of the NTC, and we can see that this starts off at around 25 degrees, so it's 25 volts but you get it, and it slowly goes up to about 42. So based on the component values that I used, the stabilization time is about 300 milliseconds. Now of course based on how fast your thermistor is reacting, the thermal capacity value needs to be adjusted. But with this particular case, we can see both our transient response, 
in time, so it takes a while for the NTC to heat up. And we can also see the effect of the resistance variation in the sense that the measured voltage with the NTC circuit is dropping. And of course, if we divide the voltage drop by the current going through the resistor, we can get its actual value. So it's going from almost 10 kilo ohms down to about 4.8. Now, to get information about the thermal behavior of the NTC, we can again turn to the datasheet. So usually one of the things that are present in the datasheet are the dissipation factor and the thermal time constant. So the dissipation factor is a measure of how much power you need to dissipate using the NTC to increase its temperature by one degree Kelvin. So the inverse of this translates to the junction to ambient thermal resistance. So that is how we can extract our series resistor from our thermal circuit. And we also have our thermal time constant expressed in seconds. So this will be equal to the product of the resistance and the capacitor in our thermal circuit. Now it's important to mention though that the datasheet strictly specifies that these two parameters are for information only. So these two are not guaranteed by design. You might get a bit more, you might get a bit less. These are just to get an idea about where you're standing. So if we were to implement these two parameters into our model, so a dissipation factor of 7 milliwatts per Kelvin and the time constant of 15 seconds, we would end up with a thermal circuit having a junction to ambient thermal resistance of 142.8 ohms and the capacitor having 105 millifarads. That way we should be getting this sort of behavior. Now of course if you want to learn more about how these two parameters are measured, the application node that I previously shown has a section about how the dissipation factor is determined and also how the thermal time constant is expressed and determined. So you can read more about that in this application note. Now, of course, most of the major manufacturers of NTCs already provide ready-made libraries for their NTC products, so libraries compatible with Spice languages. For example, we have this library from TDK on NTC thermistors, and if we quickly look what's inside of this library, we can see our basic model, so it's based around the Steinhardt and Hart equation, but it also has this thermal circuitry to represent the thermal behavior and self-heating of the NTCs. Now, of course, we have all of the NTCs present in the library, which only have these parameters, which are then used in the initial base model. So to try out the model and see if it has self-heating, the easiest way to test it out is to run different currents through the NTCs and see if their resistance varies. So what I have here is a basic simulation in which I'm injecting different currents into the same NTC. So this C620, 10 kilo ohm NTC from the TDK library that we just seen, and based on the voltage drop on the NTCs and the current injected, we can work out their resistance. And of course I'm doing a DC operating point temperature sweep going from minus 40 to 150 degrees. So if we run the simulation and we look at the values a bit, so we have in blue the voltage drop on our NTC that has 10 milliamps in it, in red the one in which we have only one microamp, and in green 1 milliamp, and we can see that all three of these are giving us different results. So the higher the current, the hotter the NTC is, and the lower its value. So in this case, the most accurate value will be the red one, in which we have the least current going through the NTC. But regardless, we can see that since we have different results, this NTC has the temperature behavior included. In the end, simulating NTCs is quite easy. If you can find the ready-made models, prepared by the component manufacturer. And if that is not available, to a certain extent, you can make your own model based on the information present in the datasheet. Now, depending on your application, usually it's not enough just to model the resistance variation with ambient temperature, but you will also want the self-heating to be included. So be sure to look for this specific feature to be included in the models that you're using. And with that said, Hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.